All right, great video this week. Today we're gonna teach you the ins and outs of saucer passes, how you hold your stick, close-ups, super slow-mo, three different types of passing priorities, and when you should use the saucer pass and when you shouldn't. We've also included a 15 minute dynamic stretching program done by Josh that you can follow along with every time when you get to the rink before you go on the ice. It'll get you ready to play your best and it's super easy to follow. Josh, how you doing? Good. Hey, we want to help the goalies out today by talking about saucer passes. Now, we've already talked previously about saucer passes. I want to go into a little bit more detail, more depth. And let's do a quick review of passing, first of all. Passing options. We've got three ways you can pass a puck from you to your teammate. You can pass it direct, indirect, and rim. And I guess a fourth way we could say is going to be a saucer. So let's just quickly demonstrate some of those passes. First type of way you can pass to a teammate is passing it direct. Straight from your stick, right to his stick. Key for good direct passes, and we'll do another one, is to pass it flat, pass it hard, right to your forehand of your teammate. So first one, direct pass. Straight from you, straight to him. Second type of pass we can give our teammate is when we have to do an indirect, where we bounce it off the board so your teammate can handle it and he can get going. Now we do indirects only when there's significant forecheck pressure. And the thing with indirects, we'll watch again on this next variation. So remember, with an indirect, you use the yellow dasher, not the white, because the yellow gives you a nice consistent bounce. If you use the white and it doesn't hit a piece of the white board that's got some backing behind it, it tends to bounce funny. Here will give you good bounce, there won't. And you can hear the difference. This is solid, that's predictable. Along a seam, solid, predictable. Nothing backing it up, you can't rely upon it. So we've got direct pass, indirect, now, the one we sometimes use, it gets in trouble. When you rim it back to your defenseman or your winger, this is gonna make him try to grab it with his feet. And that's gonna make it a lot harder to get out of the zone. So watch this mistake, the rim. Now, there are times when a rim would be called for, but more often than not, it's preferable to use a direct or indirect in that hierarchy. Now the fourth one we've talked about is the saucer pass. You might have a fork checker coming in. We do need to elevate the puck over the stick. Some mechanical issues. When you sauce it, you don't want to put it really high over the guy's stick because it's going to bounce close to him and cause him problems. So on saucer passes, it needs to go just barely over the guy's stick and then land. And let's try a couple saucer passes on his forehand and then we'll talk it through. All right. Now, let's take a look up close at a couple things Josh does when he sauces the puck. When you sauce it, the first key is you got to get that stick vertical and then slightly tilted back. And then we're going to go heel to toe and spin through the puck. That's what's gonna make it fly. You don't wanna be shooting from off the toe because that's gonna make the puck potentially rattle. You wanna shoot it from the heel to the toe. So in slow motion, again, let's do this for the first puck. You set your stick up almost straight up and down. 
tilt it back like a three iron and we go heel to toe. Here we go. So obviously, Josh, we've got to be good at forehand sauce, backhand sauce, very hard to do. That's why it's important to keep a super clean heel. You don't want to have any snow or a swollen heel because that's going to really affect your ability to get a nice tight spiral. And a saucer pass is just like a nice pass in the NFL. That thing should spiral with nice spin on it, helps it land flat. Now you can't develop great saucer skills spending hours working on VR goggles. This is stuff that's productive to help you in games. This is where you need real practice, not virtual practice. So let's take a look at Josh as he handles some backhand saucer pack. Nice. All right, when we're doing backhand sauce, the technique is fundamentally the same as on your forehand. You're gonna set that stick up almost vertical, and you're gonna wanna get that stick with the puck placed right on the heel, and you tilt it back just about three degrees, like a three iron, and then you're gonna pull through like a Frisbee and sauce it. So let's watch a couple of these up close. Here we go. 